This is a project to convert an old Rotel receiver that had a failed and obviously amplified chip to use a modern Class D amplifier board. The amplifiers are under this metal plate. This is the heatsink where it attaches the heatsinks on top of the chips to the back panel of the unit. Uh, this one, is, this chip works under there. This is the faulty channel, so I've taken the screws out of this already. But... So before I do anything, I'm just going to swap the two around because it'll only take a couple of minutes. Um, and see if the fault moves to the other channel. If it does move to the other channel, then obviously the chips are gonna. This is the chip. It's quite a big chip compared to like modern chips. This is like a bit of a monster, really, considering it's only a tiny, you know, small, low-powered one. Obviously, I don't actually need to swap them both around. I just need to take the good one, which is out of here, and put it into this position uh, and power it up and see if that works. Okay, so this is now the good chip in the position where the bad chip was. I'll switch it on. The output leaps around a bit. Well, if I turn the volume up, We've now got an output. So that suggests that the chip really was faulty and they are completely obsolete. So there's the there's the next problem, but there is a, a solution or a plan. Right, as this amplifier chip has failed, and we're not going to be able to get another one because it's obsolete. Well, I might. I mean, I saw one on eBay, but it was about fifteen quid, and it would have been a bit of a gamble. So I bought one of these, which is a modern Class D amplifier board. The data sheet is shows it, uh, it is quite a powerful thing. Um, you're going to get at least twenty watts per channel out of it. But the what happens? This one, the distortion goes up massively after about ten watts. You start getting a lot of distortion. But the data sheet for this chip, or the data sheet for the actual Rotel amplifier, is shows it as having not particularly fantastic distortion output anyway. So I think if we use this, we'll probably be okay. And it's also small and fits nicely. The main reason for using this board is most amplifiers have a split rail power supply. So you get a positive supply and a negative supply and a ground. This particular Rotel um, doesn't have that. The transformer is literally just a 29 volt. Well, after it's been rectified and smoothed, it's about 29 volts DC without a center tap. So replacing it with an alternative um, amplifier is a bit tricky. So this is the simple solution because this runs on sort of between 0 and 26 volts, which is a slight problem because I think the... Rotel power supply is more is higher than 26 volts, which is the maximum of this. I'm probably going to have to put a regulator in it. So we'll have a look. We'll measure it and see what it says it is. Well, conveniently, the uh, amplifier board fits on the metal bracket that's part of the old heatsink in this amp. Um, I didn't mount it vertically in case the heatsink fell off. I'm not sure how well it's glued on. Um, and I had to drill a couple of holes to support the board, but that's fine. And I've also fitted a LM317 voltage regulator on the same plate to uh, give out 20 volts, which should keep the amplifier sort of within its uh, spec. After getting it all sort of connected up, the the I mean it all works, but it doesn't really go very loud. Um, basically, get about two watts out of it. So the issue looks like it's the preamp board, which is the the board running along the top here it's got a really really low output so the wires from the preamp is this pair of this brown and gray wire there now they the, this is the new amplifier i fitted underneath is the part is the old amplifier or well would be i've taken the chips out so the two these these uh this these two wires here the screen lead which go onto a couple of posts wire wrap posts on the board I've disconnected one of those and routed it through to a little breadboard circuit I've knocked up. This is using a 
any 5532 op amp. I think I've set it up with a gain of about six. There's a, I think there's a minimum gain these op amps. It's got to be at least three anyway. So with a gain of about six, it gives it enough welly to actually drive the amplifier properly. So, so the next stage of this uh, this preamp is to actually build it onto a piece of old Vero board. Uh, then I can mount it into the unit. I've replaced the prototype board with uh, this. If you're not from any, if you're not familiar with this, this is well. I used to call this Vero board, but it probably comes under different names these days. Basically, it's lots of copper strips. Uh, you fit your components in it, and then you drill a hole. If you want to cut the track, basically, you just use a little drill and drill the hole, which then breaks the connection. Right, this is the output of our preamp. Now, this is where we get interesting. I mean, <laughs> this it's actually now connected into that class D amplifier, and you can see it's got a hell of a lot of noise on it, um, which is about I think it's about 270 kilohertz. You won't hear it because it's you, you know it's too high a frequency, but so that's one issue. But you noticed here that the um, you know, there's no problem. The signals are in phase. Right. So this is the output, the actual amplifier. So we still got this massive amount of noise. Um, mostly, I think, mean, because the it's a cheap board and it hasn't got any filtering on it. But that isn't the problem at the moment. The thing here, we noticed that the signals are actually out of phase. So. Um, yeah, when that point there's gone low, that the other app, these ones, this is the left and right channel, so that point has gone low, that one's gone high, so. So you really don't want out of phase uh, signals going to your speakers, because one of the big things you'll notice is the bass will disappear. So on this amp, um, it was easier to just rewire the terminal on the back of the actual amplifier, rather than pulling these wires out the circuit board and swapping them round. Okay, this is the underside of the amp. The great thing with this amp is the speaker terminals, which are these wires here, aren't actually, they're just, you know, they're connected to the circuit board through wires. So these are my wires that go up to the class D amp. So I've just rewired one of them. And um, these holes here, this is where the old amplifier chips used to be. Right, I've attached the board, my new board, to the um, on top of the old the tone control board because it happened to have a hole in it, so I've put a long bolt through it. The two, these two wires here are the outputs from the tone control board, so they're going into the input of my op amp. And then I've got screen lead coming off the output, which goes over to the input on the this class D amp. And it all sort of fits together quite nicely. And it actually works quite well as well. Okay, well, that was a fun project. Um, took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to take me to do, but that's the way electronics is at times. So, um, hope you enjoyed it, and please subscribe to my channel to be alerted to new videos I make. Thank you.